The present strip belongs to 27-year-old female, with no medical history, presented with sudden onset palpitation and chest pain. What do you think about the underlying rhythm? Which of the following is the correct answer? 1. Sinus tachycardia with LBBB. 2. AVNRT with LBBB. 3. Orthodromic AVRT with LBBB. 4. Ventricular tachycardia. SVT or supraventricular tachycardia refers to any type of tachyarrhythmia originating above the level of bundle of his. Based on the site of origin, SVTs are generally classified into two main categories. 1. Atrial origin like sinus tachycardia, atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter, and atrial fibrillation. And 2. AV nodal, like AV nodal reentrant tachycardia, or AVNRT, and atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia, or AVRT. Remember that, among all types of supraventricular tachycardias, AVNRT and AVRT are most common in general population. As the name reveals, both AVNRT and AVRT are reentrant rhythms. Reentrant rhythms are due to electrical circuits through which an electrical impulse can propagate repetitively. In AVNRT, the reentrance cated within or close to the AV node, while AVRT requires an extranodal accessory pathway to bypass the normal conduction system and directly connect atrium to ventricle. In other words, AVRT is due to a macro reentrance circuit that involves accessory pathway and AV node. As you see, in AVRT, electrical impulse can circulate between atria and ventricles in two different directions. First, anterograde conduction through the AV node, followed by retrograde conduction through accessory pathway. This type of AVRT is so-called orthodromic AVRT. And second, anterograde conduction through accessory pathway, followed by retrograde conduction through AV node. This one is known as antidromic AVRT. Let's go through the electrocardiographic findings of AVNRT and AVRT. In AVNRT, we typically a T, we typically expect to observe a regular narrow complex tachycardia with no discernible P waves. Of course, there are other less common EKG findings as well. First, remember that in presence of pre-existing aberrancy, the EKG will demonstrate wide QRS complexes. Second, although the P waves are usually not visible, sometimes retrograde P waves are visible in inferior leads and V1. Remember that, in AVNRT and AVRT, atria are activated retrogradely from below upward. Therefore, in AVNRT, retrograde P waves superimpose on QRS complexes or may be recorded immediately after the QRS complexes, deforming ST segment and T wave. The retrograde P waves occurring at the end of QRS complexes may be mistaken for S wave in inferior leads or R wave in lead V1. That's why visible retrograde P waves in N1 are so called pseudo S wave and pseudo R wave respectively. In general, the RP interval, which is measured from the peak of R wave to the beginning of P wave, less than 70 millisecond is highly in favor of AVNRT. Although longer RP interval does not exclude AVNRT. This electrocardiogram is illustrating typical AVNRT. Regular narrow complex tachycardia with pseudo R wave in V1 and pseudo S wave in inferior leads is present. Additionally, RP interval is less than 40 millisecond. So, these findings favor AVNRT. As we said, AVRT is generally classified into two main categories. In orthodromic AVRT, electrical impulse circulates in a clockwise direction. Since the electrical impulses reach ventricles through AV node and his Purkinje network in absence of pre-existing pre conduction system abnormality, QRS complexes are normally narrow during tachyarrhythmia. So, orthodromic AVRT is a kind of regular supraventricular tachycardia with narrow QRS complexes. 
Due to retrograde depolarization of atria, inverted P waves are visible in inferior leads. The RP interval is always greater than 70 millisecond. So, looking for retrograde P waves is the best way to distinguish orthodromic AVRT from AVNRT. In summary, the main electrocardiographic difference between AVNRT and AVRT is the RP interval. RP interval lesser than 70 millisecond favors AVNRT, while values greater than 70 millisecond often excludes AVNRT as the possible cause of tachyarrhythmia. This is the EKG tracing in the very beginning of the video. It demonstrates orthodromic AVRT with LBBB. There are retrograde P waves in inferior leads with RP interval greater than 70 millisecond. Thanks to left bundle branch block, the QRS complexes are obviously wide. So, orthodromic AVRT is most probable. Remember that, SVT of any cause, may be wide due to pre-existing or rate-dependent bundle branch block. In antidromic AVRT, electrical impulse circulates in a counterclockwise direction. Since the electrical impulses reach ventricles through accessory pathway, QRS complexes are wide due to delta wave and abnormal ventricular activation. So, antidromic AVRT is a kind of regular supraventricular tachycardia with wide QRS complexes. Like orthodromic AVRT, thanks to retrograde depolarization of atria, inverted P waves are visible in one or several leads. P interval is almost always greater than 70 millisecond. Other associated findings in AVRT and AVNRT are electrical alternance, diffuse ST depression, and T wave inversion. This strip is illustrating antidromic AVRT. There is regular wide complex tachycardia with retrograde P waves superimposed on ST segment. In addition, there are obvious delta waves in V2 to V4 and D2. So, the arrhythmia is antidromic AVRT. Remember one important note, arrhythmia is associated with accessory pathway, like AVRT and pre-excited AF, can produce heart rates higher than 250 beats per minute. In other words, heart rates greater than 250 beats per minute are almost always due to accessory pathway, whether you see delta wave or not. Thanks for watching this video. If you are eager, if you are eager to learn more about basic electrocardiogram, subscribe me and ring the bell for further videos. Have fun.